healing is happening in your life tonight at the mention of Jesus sicknesses are bowing diseases are bowing witches are fleeing demons are fleeing in your life That's a very nice name. Very, very nice. Jesus. So many things have been rearranged for your advantage. The way you shouted his name several times. Some foundations that were there before you were born. Foundations of strongholds. Foundations of poverty. Foundations of unspirituality are being destroyed tonight. Take your liberty. Take your freedom. It is your portion. Clap your hands for Jesus. Beautiful. Let us pray. Father, what a blessing it is to be here. What an atmosphere. We can feel your presence here already. And you have guided and instructed us in many ways already. And tonight, before you disperse us, speak to us again. We love your voice. We love your guidance and direction. The entrance of your word brings light. There's darkness all around us. Tonight, continue to shed more light into our path. And lamps, give us lamps to find our way just near our feet. We thank you. Please open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of your law. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you. This international choir. Fantastic. Very powerful, very nice. Fantastic. We are blessed to be here tonight. And um, when I came in, I thought you were preaching the message I was going to preach. Because my message tonight is entitled The Junction of Elimination. And it's one of the most important messages you can hear in your entire Christian life. And it gets chapter 2, sorry. 2 Kings chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 1. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord... You don't know how to turn off your phone? Put it in water. <laughs> Dip your phone in water. It's disturbing us, please. So that it can stop ringing. This type of China phone, sometimes when it rings, you press off, it doesn't go off. Then when you dip it in water, it will stop. Then you pick your thing back. It's, it's waterproof. <laughs> hey, it's too powerful. Okay, so now, and it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah said, went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, tarry here in Gilgal. Okay. 
I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. Now you see, so this is very just look at me, sister. Raise your head, look at me. Yes. Good. Now, this story is about Elisha following Elijah till Elijah is taken up to glory and he asks for double portion of the spirit that is on Elijah and then he returns with it. So this is the journey. So the beginning of the journey, they were in a town called Gilgal. And then when Elijah was going on the journey, he said to Elisha, don't follow me again okay stay here and elisha is saying that as the lord liveth two conditions one is as long as the lord is alive two and as long as thy soul liveth so these two conditions must be fulfilled before i can stay here now the lord doesn't die so it's not easy for the lord the lord cannot die he says as long as the lord liveth that condition can never be broken. And as long as thy soul liveth, that means that until death, I am with you. Okay? And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel, so then they continued to Gilgal. So they went down to Bethel, sorry. And the, the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel, so they got to a town called Bethel, then the sons of the prophets who were in the prophet school were in, the, in that town. And they came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, So now the sons of the prophets are also putting pressure on him to stop following and many of us are going to come to that junction many times where there are others who are not going where you are going but there is a junction they are trying to turn you away from focus on the journey as long as the lord liveth and as long as thy soul liveth beautiful verse 4 and elijah said unto him elisha Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, as, Lord, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. I'm believing that God will have children in his house who can say, I will never leave thee. Yes. As long as thy soul liveth. It's like if you are with a man of God, you are following an anointed servant of the Lord, it must be your avowed intent that I will never leave you as long as the Lord liveth. Number one. And as long as your soul liveth, you will find me around you. But many Christians don't have that resolve. That is why you can sing everything that double double. It doesn't just come through singing. It comes through a, a, a determination that even if the man of God I am trying to follow is doing things or saying things to keep me back I will never leave I will follow hard next one let's go so from Gilgal they tried to stop him he didn't stop they got to Bethel they tried to stop him he didn't stop they came to Jericho then the sons of the prophet that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord would take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. It means that the temptation to return eh, and to stop following hard, it won't come once. <laughs> it will come along the journey several times yes beautiful i like this passage very much 
Okay, and the sons of the prophets, they say, okay, then he said, hold your peace, verse 6. And Elijah said, then the man of God also comes again. Tarry, I pray thee here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. Then he said, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And, thy, the, and, the, and they too went on. Then 50 sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off, and they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Wow. Nevertheless, if thou see me go, huh? if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven and elisha saw it and he cried my father my father wow the chariot of israel and the horsemen thereof and he saw him no more and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he, had, he also had smitten the waters, they parted thither and thither, Hither or hither and thither or thither and hither. And Elijah went over. My God. And when the sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they bowed themselves. Is that right there? And they, and they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him and they said unto him behold now there be there be with thy servants 50 strong men blah 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 but what is interesting is that the man got the double portion he needed and it was a journey and at different junctions he almost could have given up but you see i think elijah elisha must have read or heard about elijah's first servant do you know Elijah's first servant? The guy who poured water on the sacrifice. The guy who saw fire come from heaven. The guy who was there when Elijah slew the 7,000 prophets of Baal. Is that not so? The guy who saw the cloud like the hand of a man. And he asked him to run off. If you read 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 3, I think it is, yes. Put it up, please. And when he saw that, because Elijah at this time, from verse 1, give us verse 1. Verse 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and withal how he had slain the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life, as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. A threat to. You are threatening a man who has called fire from heaven. But you see, that is where you also see that even though you can call fire from heaven, you better be careful because a temptation can floor you. Sometimes at the height of a certain manifestation, the next moment before you realize you are up, you are falling because the power manifestation does not immunize you from human frailties. Verse 3. You, that's another subject you can, talk, you can study on it. But verse 3. 
when Elijah, he, that means Elijah, saw that or heard the threat, he arose and went for his life. The prophet who brought fire from heaven, he ran away for his life. Hey! And came to a place called Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. That was the end of that servant. We never heard of him again. He stopped at Beersheba, but the place of double portion was beyond River Jordan. So when you are with a man of God, following, pursuing, after anointing, it doesn't come from your first meeting. As a matter of fact, after this event, God asked him to anoint Elijah to be Elisha to be prophet in his room. So he went to the place where Elisha was a businessman. The Bible says he was in a 12-man business partnership. They were in some plowing business and he was with the 12 uh, cow that was plowing. He killed his cow, he shared the instruments and gave it to his partners. But Elijah met him and said, put his garment, he threw the garment on the guy. And immediately, Elisha became his servant. If it was today, many Christians, many men of God, once the mantle of a prophet has fallen on you, it is it's finished. You are anointed from that day. Especially people of African descent who are into charms, amulets. You see, in our background, we have idolatry, fetishism, and this type of charms, amulets, chains, rings, uh, some little bottle with some black powder in it. Africans like those type of things. If it was an African, he had put the mantle on. He won't even follow him again. Hey! I met prophet Elijah. Elijah. He put his mantle on me. I am now a prophet. I'm on my way. But it is here you see that just being a mantle being put on you, may, it may not be the end. It is anointing is also progressive. The mantling is a progressive thing. And he didn't get the double portion until they went to the other side of the Jordan. It was a long journey. They went from Gilgal to Bethel, from Bethel to Jericho, from Jericho to Jordan. They crossed the Jordan. Next time you go to Jerusalem, you go to Israel. I'll be there. Say, I'll be there. I'll be there. Yes. Or you won't go there. One day, keep us out to be going to Israel. You'll be one of the people that will go. Watch out for the journey. It's not a simple walk. When we go there, we sit on buses and go. From we went to Jericho, we, we drove to Jordan, and then we were there. The river Jordan even was there. We crossed the river. We didn't cross because beyond the Jordan is Syria. We are not allowed to go there. <laughs> then they are soldiers with guns and they are waiting to shoot if you try to cross. The long journey. And it was this journey that revealed the junctions of elimination that removes people from following anointed people. There are people who are not anointed today because they go to Gilgal and stay there. Or even Beersheba, they stay there. Because they felt that the man of God is doing, I'm following you every day. You say I should stay here. Every day you say I shouldn't come. When you are having meetings, you don't call me. Yes. When you come, you don't even greet me sometimes. So you'll be in Gilgal and you are offended by the anointed person himself and stay. You never continue on your journey. But when Elijah, Elisha was told by Elijah, stay here, he said, I remember there was a guy who used to work with you. Nobody knows. We don't even know his name. We don't know where he is now. I'm not going to go through the same fate. I will not end up the way he ended. If it is Gilgal, he wants me to stay. I will not stay here. As long as the Lord liveth, and as long as your soul liveth, I am with you to the very end. I'm with you to the very end. 
You wait, you wait. Even if you don't clap, you wait. No problem. No problem. By all means. Yes. There are people who are sitting here who deserve a double portion of the anointing that is on your father in this house. And that double portion is not coming in the third year. It may not even come in the seventh year. It may not even come in the tenth year. Perhaps in the twelfth year, that's when it's coming. But there will be junctions to eliminate you from Beth, Beth Bathsheba. You can be dropped at Gilgal. You can easily be dropped in Bethel. You can even be dropped in Jericho. You may never be able to get to the Jordan before you can even cross the Jordan. But I pray that tonight as I preach this word will find access into your inner man. Because you are looking at somebody who has worked with a man of God for 37 years. And I've not lost my sense of admiration. I've not lost my respect. I've not lost my desire to, to learn from him. I've not stopped. I'm not tired of his messages. I am not tired of his voice. I'm not tired of his person. I yearn for him every day. My desire one day is to be given and to be blessed with a double portion of the anointing that Bishop Dahiwad Mills carries in this life. That is my desire. And I just want for the few minutes we have to show you different things that come to you at different junctions and they are calculated to eliminate you because Satan knows that this one anointed person is trouble enough. Two of him will be dangerous. But two and a half of him will be too much for me to handle. Because if somebody gets a double portion of his spirit and is walking in town and this man too is also walking in town with his one portion and somebody has a double portion walking in town, I'm finished. He will try to eliminate you. But by the grace of God, you will escape. Amen. Your, your amen was very weak. Amen. Shout a louder amen. amen. So let me give you as many as I can, but there are so many, but you know, because they are all things that are warning signs. And you must escape them. Are you there still? Okay. Look at Matthew, 20, Matthew 15, 22. Matthew 15, verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coasts and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil, but he answered her not a word. So number one. When your calls, text messages, emails, whatsapps are not responded to. Jesus said to the woman, no, he didn't say. The Bible says, she cried after Jesus and said, my daughter is grievously vexed with an evil spirit. The Bible says, and he answered her not a word. It's the first elimination point. When you text your pastor, he doesn't respond. When you call, you, you miss the call, but he never returns the call. I know a brother who left our church. He said to me, I sent about four pages of WhatsApp messages, and all I got was okay. Even he got a response. <laughs> ah, I'm surprised that he, be, he got a response okay. I'm, I said, I want to go here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And the pastor said, okay. God, he was expecting, okay. So why are you going? Well, what are you going to do there? When will you go? He was expecting more words. But when he got okay, he was offended. He left the ministry. Now you may say, it's, wow, wow, wow. But sometimes you can come to a man of God. You have a serious, grievous demon and evil spirits infestation and when you come to the man of God he doesn't seem to have time to solve that problem he's silent on it for some time and that's 
many people end up at that junction and never progress you are crossing that junction tonight sometimes i can even today i've sent about four messages to my bishop i sent one he responded then i sent four after that he has not responded but i'm here <laughs> i'm flowing it's not a problem but there are people who get offended just because you are calling they are not minding you you are texting they are not responding you are knocking they are not opening it fits you that you are not important and it has offended you you are staying at gilgal verse 23 but he answered and not a word and his disciples came and besought him saying send her away for she crieth after us so now the disciples have also joined in he says send her away for she crieth after us number two point number two when it seems your company is not desired you see you can be somewhere and two people are talking and they look at you and they turn and continue talking and they look at you and they turn and continue talking then you know that you are not qualified to be in the midst of them yeah I mean, you are going to see the pastor. You come, they say, okay, his PA is there. See the PA. Then the PA is standing there. And then you tell the PA that go and tell. Then you go and tell the pastor. Then when she, she tells the pastor, he tends to look at you. Then he continues his conversation. Then he tends to look at you, continues his conversation, and continues and never bothers to call you. Yes. When you are in a church, eh, these are the things. They eliminate you very fast. So your journey to the anointing. You're following hard after an anointed person is cut short. You will stay in Gilgal, Kai, and build a house there, and make a borehole, drink your water, and make a farm. But you are supposed to be a man carrying a double portion of the spirit that is on that man of God. Look at where you are now. Some of us, because of some of these things, you are even you are even in the church, but you have you have closed your spirit. Where now you say? I feel it. Number three. Hey. Look, continue verse twenty-four, please. Put it up for me. Twenty-four but worshipped him you see i like this woman oh no matter what was happening she was still coming yeah she needs her daughter is grievously vexed with an unclean spirit and look at how there she's being treated and she's not stopping she we came to worship you didn't mind me but i'll worship you <laughs> you didn't mind me but i'm not giving up I'm, I'm, I will add worship in case the worship may work for me. And when the worship came, I tell you, look at it. Then she came and worshiped, saying, help me. Verse 26. The, but he answered and said, it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Yes. So now this time, point number three says, when derogatory remarks are made about you to illustrate a point when derogatory or insulting remarks are made about you to illustrate a point you are a dog your daughter is also a dog a dog a dog a dog, a dog. <laughs> <laughs> what was the baby of a dog? <laughs> uh, a puppy. <laughs> I almost said doglet. <laughs> hey! You are a dog. You and your children, your daughter are dogs. We, the Israelis, we are the children. We eat at table. You are dogs. When an insulting remark is made about you to illustrate a point have you been in a service before when they said all oh, you know in ghana there are tribes who have certain characteristics yes 
if you come from a certain tribe which has which begins with one of the alphabets from a to z <laughs> they are into themselves pa they like themselves pa so if the person has a house help she's very likely to come from that tribe yes and if she has a fitter he's from that tribe if, if, if he has if there is a man he has a, a baba the baba is from that tribe preaching if there's a gate man he's from that tribe it's a nyebro preaching <laughs> forgive so let's say you are preaching in the church and you are making the point that in Christ Jesus, there is neither male nor female. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Then you say that, for example, you see, if you are an away, and, and, and you, you like yourselves, you will not be a good shepherd. Because maybe the people who are in the church, there are not many airways in it. So if you are only looking for airways, you won't find many around where you are supposed to minister. Because you want your sheep to, to come from your tribe. I've said it, I've said it. If you are an airway, right now you yes. yes. Your house help is Ajovi. Your mechanic is Prosper. Your dentist is... Uh, Talk about your, <laughs> your 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 gynecologist is uh, Kwaukume. Your gate money that will be done. <laughs> it's like when we look in your life, your hairdresser is what Elikem, <laughs> and your house help is called Peace. You see now. As everybody's laughing, if you're an AWA, you can get to a junction of elimination and feel that this church, you know, they don't like airways. Where now you say? But there's no better example to give if I'm preaching and I want an illustration about people who can be shepherds but are so fixated on tribal lines like yes and it's true you see titus titus look at the <laughs> Kai, i'll preach i tell you let me preach allow me to preach i will preach Titus chapter 1. Listen to this. He says, one of themselves, verse 12, Titus 1 12, one of themselves, even, you see, Titus is, is writing, Paul is writing to Titus, and he says, for this cause I've left you in Crete, that you said the things that are in order. So he's now giving the characteristic of the people who live in the place called Crete. And he said, one of themselves, verse, 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 what? verse 12, but one of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, the Christians are always liars. You see, I'm sending you to this group. You see, the place you are going, this is their characteristic. They are always liars. Evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. So sometimes some things are true about us. And listen to what the woman said when Jesus said yeah, uh, the bread shouldn't be given to dogs. Listen to her response. The, 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 she said, behold, the, no, verse, verse 27, verse 27. Listen to the woman's response. Verse 27, verse 27, verse 27. Verse. The woman said, truth, Lord. You call me dog. It's true. You wouldn't say it's true that we airways are tribalistic. So we have to give you evidence. What's the name of your hairdresser? Then you say, <laughs> okay, Della. What's the name of your driver? Della. 
what's the name of your husband's baba Della <laughs> Della them so now even after three names then you see that you see the thing we are saying no, not true la. so allow us to preach the message so that it, you can be sound in the faith but it can be your junction of elimination you will be eliminated from the troop of people who are following to catch a double portion of the anointing. If you are a chorister in the, 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 the leader of the choir, you, you will be shocked that when the leader is an away, most of the girls will be airways. Okay, so that's Ewes. Please, let's put that aside and come to Gas. If you are a Gas, Gas are quarrelsome. I, I come from there. I am one, one of their own. A prophet of renown gives this witness about them that the Gas are always quarrelsome. So if you are going to marry and the person is a Gas, be careful. No. I am a girl. I am from Injatupai. A chomi nilante o kunka bleboje ade. Yes. So you may be a guy in the church as we are preaching. You know, we are preaching about marriage. Then we are talking about choosing married partners. And we are pointing out that if you're a gang girl, GGs, we call them GGs, gang girls, they are quarrelsome. Hey, they will stretch the matter. No, 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 no. What a fancy girl will release, a gang girl will not release. No, but when I say when 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 we are in our when we often we are in a family house and they are giving you your food, if they call your name twice, you are sure that an insult will follow it. Even your food. Olokwe. Olokwe will not answer. Olokwe. Then the third one, no. Then an insult will follow. Meanwhile, it's not anything, just your food. Just your food. So you see the woman, when we when we heard the story. <laughs> Now, if you are a guy wife, this revelation can deliver you. Can deliver you. Well, some of our quarrels are useless, senseless, and baseless. There's no reason for the quarrel. You are just, I can, you, you are just poised for just. And, and I will tell you, uh, many times when a woman, a guy girl, a Gigi, is speaking that way, she's not actually quite like angry quarrel. No, no. It's, it's, it's the way they express themselves. It's in the blood. It's in the moja. And, and my wife is also a Gigi. So, I used to think that, I said, why are you always quarreling? She said, it won't cut you. you know, because she, she used to tell me, so I said that, why? Then she would say, shouldn't I speak? I say, yeah, speak, but you don't have to always be attacking me. But I'm not attacking you. I'm speaking. I say, yeah, but the way you are speaking, it's like, Mini one okay, and maybe and Mini why have you put this here? She's not quarreling. No. God gave me the revelation that it's not a quarrel. She's expressing her love. Yeah. <laughs> hey! Another problem with my people, we don't thrive. We don't thrive. 
Accra is the city. Accra is the capital. In Babaya, what was she born? What about what be a be a no or your if your husband goes on track, you will not come. And, and Ashanti's fantasies are all called Fantecheme. Yes. <laughs> Whether you are Ashanti or a Fanti, you are Fantecheme. Yes. Any Fantecheme, I remember. I remember. I remember. I So if you're a girl girl, a girl boy, and they are saying girls are quarrelsome, girls, and Bishop Takia boy told me, he said, oh, when we meet, we will see that we are, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are it's like we are exchanging pleasantries, but in the midst of it, no, we are fighting. <laughs> and he said, he will, he will meet uh, Reverend Mark, who will tell you, Charlie, oh, no, man, sorry. that's man, sorry. oh, no, man, sorry. then he will give me that example, he said, then, he will say, hey, bet bow nya nyo ni. Bet bow nya nyo. Preaching on. Say, oh, so, bet preaching on. And my Lord, let's leave the guns and come to the fanties. Hey, hey. fancy for the chrome, fancy for your abba, your betty z, your betty ch, your belly of on your nia. Yay, hey, you're not fancy for ya. Oh man. So you may be a fancy in a service like this. We are preaching. Then we say that. You see, fancy, sir, if you're a fancy, one of the common threats is that they like eating such things. Sweet things. They never build, though. When sit down, when sitting in our way, when you you can even be a, a fancy pastor and you go for a conference, and a man of God comes to say that, look, if you're a leader, build something. It's one of the uh, points in the Art of Leadership book. If you're a leader, build something. Then he will say, for example, if you're a fancy. You and a fancy pastor, most likely you'll be at a rented place for a long time. You won't buy land, you won't build, you won't build, though. But you go to restaurant more than buy cement. You will buy that door. You will that door. You you buy fried rice. Fancy for you. I was in Takradi, I was preaching. I don't know what I was preaching about, but this thing came through. Then I said, ah, I am fancy for you. Then I was in fancy land. And I told them that I'm a fancy. <laughs> I had to establish that one before they thought that I was saying something bad. Well, my mother comes from Kuntu. My father comes from Atukpai. It was a combination of dangerous fante koyo ke gakoyo. Very dangerous combination in one body. <laughs> now, I say, I'm fancy free. Be be a yacho. O to mo de batter no di ye pan o ne nim no da to frying pan no do. Na I'm a butter na cho a copan o num. We re rem na orida butter na for fun na no ho. She's preaching no. Then an older lady was sitting there. She told me, she said, Ni aye milo, ni et butter ni biatum. Now me say, it's a movie that. 
Hey! Milo, I want to eat sea butter. Oh, you need sea butter. I said, this one is extreme. Hey! So you are a fancy man, and you are, you are, your tribe is being used in a kind of derogatory, if you like, even insulting way to illustrate the point. It's not easy when, when you are the one, you are the focus. And the woman was the focus, she and her daughter. I said, we don't give bread. Healing is bread. You are dogs. We are children. You see, but I like the woman. She said, it's true. It's true. What you are saying is true. And sometimes just that admission will immediately set you free. But you'll be angry. Hey, no, no, no. It's not like that. You see, but what about the Ashantis too? Asante for Pesca. Ah, or take a course one anna or then chamber and pound when I was here, daughter as the assembly. Hey, preaching and umja Ashantis are proud. Yes, it's not easy to correct an Ashanti man. Proud. So you are here, you are a pastor, then you are an Ashanti. As they are giving this illustration, then you start shifting your bottles, you sit like this. <laughs> what now you say? <laughs> because, like Paul told Titus, this witness is true. So when you are, you are talking to them, don't counsel gently. Rebuke them sharply. Because if you, that's why sometimes preaching is not effective. Or you are not an effective leader because you don't address the issue directly in the way it should be addressed. Because when there's an issue, there are ways to, you know every issue that we are kind of buck Oh, there's not any problem. When you are but it's okay. You don't have to raise your voice like that. No. He said, no. This issue where, when you are talking to these Christians, I've set you there to set things in order. One of the things you should do is that because they are slow bellies, they like food. <laughs> and they are always liars. Always liars. So, when you are dealing with people who are always liars, rebuke them sharply. Don't be diplomatic. Don't sugarcoat things. Rebuke sharply. What will be the result? They will be sound in the faith. They will be sound in the faith. So the junction of a derogatory remark being made about you to illustrate a point is an elimination point. A lot of people get there, they can't cross. They cannot cross. You want us to preach and say, you know, there are certain things that certain people do. Somehow, some of those things, you know, don't augur well for the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. What are these? Some, sorry, what is this? We don't know what you are talking about. We can't relate with the message because it doesn't apply to anything we can know about. But the Christians, they are slow bellies. They are always liars. Yes. Ashantis are smart. Odubeko sesia. Preaching, no? So, yeah, can't be there now when you are here. You can't be there now when you are here. You can't be there now But you have to tell, like the woman, she said, it is true. Then she capitalized on Jesus' analogy and said it's true. When children are eating, the way children are, I mean, she was so smart, the way children are, by all means, some will go on the ground. Be better formed by all means. Whether on the table, whether on the bed, whether on the car seat, whatever they are sitting on, there will be food everywhere. I don't know why. They enjoy it. Like, the thing he has eaten, some is in the mouth, some is flying all over. It's like all over the place. The children, by all means, some will fall on the ground. And dogs pick the ones that fall on the ground. And whether I'm eating from the table or I'm eating from the ground, hey. it's still food. He said, hey! This woman has 
said something that I have never heard in the whole of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto you, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. You are going to be made whole from the hour you pass that junction of elimination. Not knowing that the thing was like a test. And Elijah experienced it. We come to Gilgal, stay here. I mean, sometimes when the Bible says stay here, it sounds like it was said very gently and coolly. But somebody is following you for some time. You say, go, go, go. It's not going. Do you think that fourth time, third time, you are going to say, go, 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 go? He said, hey! I say, go. Ah, I'm going forward. Why are you following me still? When David came to his house to come and bless his household after putting the ark of God in its place from Obedidom's house, he was met at the door by his wife, ranting and raving. How glorious was the king today who, who, who uncovered himself before the sanquasses in the town. When you see, you read it in the Bible, it's like, oh, she just said to him that, oh, how glorious was the king who uncovered himself. But you know how quarrels are in homes. And if she was a gun too. Because they say guns, we are is Israelis. Guns are from Israel. Did you know that? Yes. They say we are from Israel. So if she's from Israel, then... <laughs> she's our, our sister then if it's our sister when you are coming and then you open the where? <laughs> you hear our voice from very at the gates you will hear us from the gate oh David oh 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 Everybody has seen you. Hey, hey. Ah, Kambu boy, Varanda boy. Shabu. mistake. Yes. Say some for me, sister. You see, the thing is flowing like that. Only Christ can tame us all. Only Christ can mellow us all. Hey! Without premeditation. May you escape every junction that wants to eliminate you. Let me give you some two or three more. Hey! Fantastic. She. The other day, somebody was asking me, said, So, what is it that has made you able to stay with Bishop Dark for 37 years? I have crossed junctions. And you will cross junctions too. Number four. So I've given you three. One is that your calls are not responded to. Two is that your company is not desired. And three, derogatory remarks are made to, about you to illustrate a point. Hey. Number four. When your colleague is commended and you are overlooked. In Genesis 4, 3, and in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the ground an offering unto, from the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very angry. So his colleague Abel made a sacrifice and God had respect. When we were children, they told us that when Abel made a sacrifice, his smoke went straight like so. And then Cain's own was meandering. <laughs> yes, but it's not in the Bible. 
I mean, that aspect is not in the Bible. It's just a way to help children to understand what, how God respected this one. So that your smoke went straight, and then this one's own was just going on the ground like that. It's like the smoke couldn't rise. Hey! Hmm. Too powerful. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Sometimes you can be in a church, you can see that some people are applauded. And you seem to have been overlooked. Oh, we want to thank, you know, Sister So and So, who really organized, you know, the whatever around the conference, and it was so powerful. Please put your hands together for Sister Ajwa, then they clap for her. And then you remember that, ah, you did a lot of things. <laughs> Nobody has mentioned your name. Yes. And there are people who experienced this maybe even two years ago and have changed their countenance has fallen. They don't smile. They are not excited anymore. They've withdrawn. And when you go into it and find out, you realize that two years ago you had respect for somebody's offering and for me, you did not have any respect. Number five, when the applause, someone's applause is louder than yours. Hmm. When someone's applause is louder than, when your brother or another's applause is louder, applause for someone stays longer and louder. First Samuel 18, you learn it from Saul and when Saul heard that David, they were singing to him. 1 Samuel 18 verse 5. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him. There was no problem between David and Saul. And he behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war. And he was accepted in the sight of all the people after he had killed Goliath. Do you remember that? And in the sight of Saul's servants. Everybody liked him. Verse 6. And it came to pass as they came... When David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul, with tabrets, with joy, with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very angry, very wroth. And the saying displeased him and said, and he said, they have ascribed unto David ten thousands. And to me, they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day forward. What's your name? Pardon? Naomi. And what's your name? Florence. Flora. Flora. Flora and come. Come here. Yes. You see, we have to be real because if I say some people somewhere, somewhere, you about this, yeah, since I've been here, these two have sung beautifully. Yes. Even because of your singing, I told your pastor I'm taking some of your songs, your songs, not some, but your songs I'm taking to my church. Yes. I'm taking the draw. Yes. When I came, she sang draw. Now, draw, we, we, we have come to draw, 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 draw from you again. Okay. Then this one has been singing. Sometimes Nigerian, half Nigerian, half English songs. Powerful. Holding us spellbound in worship. Now, we all like both of them. But you can get to a place where maybe you are clapping more for this one. Then you will be sitting there. And you can see that when she sang then, the people stood up, they were clapping. They were not sitting down. When you were singing, maybe they didn't, they, okay, two, three people stood, but how come oh, they didn't stand up? Like, how they stood for? And this one came first. Yes, now they have ascribed to her 10,000. They call her the keeper's house Sinash. 
Is that what they do? And me, you see, this is Saul who Saul said, ah, Saul had been to battles. When Saul, uh, David was giving the lamentation for Saul's death, the lamentation of David, he said, this is uh, Saul who led you in battles. Yes. Who clothed you with scarlet? This is Saul. How are the mighty fallen? And this man comes to kill one giant. And the one is 10,000. And this many battles the man has fought. I know it's 1,000. What? Yes. I've been singing all these years. Nobody has called me Sinash. I even started singing Sinatra song before this one came. <laughs> now they have ascribed to her 10,000 and given her accolades, nomenclature, laudations, praises. Hey, even people are giving her offerings. Glorious flora. Hey, hey. But they are both beautiful singers. Fantastic in their callings. But as soon as the girl starts singing praises, because often it's from the women. Yeah. Women. Yes, Preaching. Huh? The women are always bringing such comparisons. Yeah, I even like her dress. When, then they move from the anointing and the grace that was on there. Eh, even her dress and cry. I say, oh, no, 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 no. Baby, this one, then the women know. Then often what you say will get to them. And divide them sharply if you don't cross that junction. And say, it doesn't matter. See, me, I've been with Bishop E.A.T. Saki. We are still Bishop from day one. And Bishop selected Bishop E.A.T. Saki is my first assistant. Yes. So when he's not there, he, and when he is not there, he will preach. He will be the leader of the church if he is not there. Yes. And I said, yes. T you are. You see, my main quarrel with Bishop E.A.T. Saki is that when Bishop traveled those days, when we were in one church, I mean, you know that you are the one who should preach. Then you always want to toss it that I should preach. Because those days, you see, Bishop has finished preaching. The pulpit is hot. You are now going to stand there in the shadow and do something. It's like you can see that we are fly. <laughs> and sometimes, genuinely, we've, we've, Bishop preaches every service he's preaching. Every service. Every service. So sometimes you are almost comfortable. It's like, if I'm not ready to preach now. You preach, uh, then next week he say oh, he's traveling. That one too, don't sink in your head. Oh. After he has left, then the Sunday is coming, then he will call. Especially Tuesdays. Because weekday service no, is also a different ball game. Then I'll get a call from him. <laughs> Charlie, oh, <clears throat> um, oh, beard, beard, Charlie, you there. Miss, oh, yeah, are they? Are they? Why? Are you okay? Oh, yeah, mom, 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 bam, mom, bam. <laughs> I'm not well. I'm not well at all. When I realized that it's Tuesday, then I said, Oh, I'll pray for you. You'll be well. May the Lord strengthen you by 6 p.m. <laughs> May you be anointed to do the work of God. May the Lord elevate you. Then his voice will now appear and say, Oh, Charlie, they show me, they show me, they show me. <laughs> but never a struggle. Never will a struggle. We've never had a struggle. Why are you the one preaching? Why shouldn't I also be giving selection? I should also be made this. Never. Never. If there's a meeting, Bishop is not there. There's nothing like I'm starting the meeting before. I don't even pray opening prayer. I don't even pray. You are the one. You are in charge. I am not in charge. 
Even though they say we are colleagues, you are ahead of me. When bishop is not there, you are the one. You are our leader when bishop is not there. You are ahead of me if bishop is not there. I give you that right. It is your right. It is for you. It is the case. Fine. When he stands to preach every time, he will be saying that he doesn't know what to So What should he preach? What should he preach? And I say, oh, preach about how to catch birds and keep them in a cage. <laughs> he said, oh, Charlie, why? Why? They show me. They show me. <laughs> Sometimes he'll say, look, you've traveled, you've gone to hold camps, you've preached so much. Come and preach just one of the sermons you preach at other places. Please, I beg you. I said, T, Bishop told us when he was going, you will preach. I don't know why you are putting it on me. I mean, when you see us, it's like some children who are playing or who are quarreling. It's very funny. But it's a serious quarrel. He, he actually wants me to preach genuinely, but and I also want him to preach genuinely. Yes. And when he's preaching, I'm the chief supporter. Yes. I'm standing when he's preaching. He will say when he's preaching that. This is my twin brother. And, and, and people even sometimes make a mistake. They call me Bishop Saki and they call him Bishop Eddie. And, and he will say, this is my twin brother. I, I preach better than him. <laughs> yes. And when I start, I say, yeah, he preaches better than me. He preaches better. He preaches better truly. He preaches better. You see, because if you are not careful, what can happen is that people start making this, I am of Paul. I am of Apollos. Then they say, hey, you know, and the Bible says Apollos was a man mighty in the scriptures. And Paul, no, they say when he comes, his speech is very calm. When his letters are hotter than when he's preaching. So when he comes, they don't, his preaching is not fiery like Apollos own. So people in Corinth started saying, I prefer Paul when he preaches. And then he said, some people say, we prefer Paul when he preaches. Apollos preaches, Paul preaches. Which one do you prefer? Me, I am an Apollite. Apollite. And this one said, I'm a Paul, Pauline, Pauline apostle. <laughs> hey! And all of them is to, is to drive you at that junction where you stop, con you stop moving forward. It's an elimination, a junction of elimination. Where two people are picked together. They, they, then some people have a fan club. Hey, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Preach, 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 preach. Just in Cassandra praises. <laughs> they are praising you against another. It's not the praise, it's not for you alone. It's just so that they show others that, no, we, we prefer this person to the other guy. So our applause is louder. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. There's no need. There's no need. Today, Bishop Saki is at broadcasting towards Kaswa. I'm also at Nanakrum here, uh, East Legon Hills. It's Nanakrum, but normally, you know, I said, oh, I be you. But when you say East Legon Hills, just say East Legon, no cry when you then we wedge some hills on it and say, yes, powerful. But it's actually, actually the real name is Santo. <laughs> and I'm also there. We are always encouraging each other. Charlie, church growth is not easy. This church growth is not easy. Charlie, my road is so bad. So my road here, by God's grace, they've tarred it for me. So Charlie, it's good for you, pa. We'll be encouraging each other. Saul has killed his thousands. Then they will make a, they were singing, oh, so Saul has killed his thousands and David has killed ten thousand. Saul has killed one thousand and David has killed ten thousand. One thousand, ten thousand, one thousand, ten thousand. David has killed ten thousand and Saul has killed one thousand. Ten thousand. And Saul will be there bored. May God deliver you from that. Yeah. It's a junction that eliminates. Before you start feeling you are greater than her, she starts feeling she's greater than you. You quench the spirit. Yeah. 
If you want to do well in the ministry, eliminate. The Bible says that they comparing themselves by themselves and measuring themselves by themselves are not wise. Our foolishness is manifested in our comparison. So you see, when you are following, like uh, even when you are pastors in a church, you have this type of unspoken competitions. And if you are, uh, you are, are you the only resident pastor? And there are other pastors who just play around. Yes, around, around. Yes. It's important to set the order. It's a military uh, uh, zone, so everybody has must have that rank, respect rank, and follow it well, so that there's no confusion. The enemy wants to sow confusion, we shouldn't allow him. And it's because people get offended. This one is applauded, they are making him preach. In my church, if they say you should preach, you preach, ah, nobody is there. You preach for two, 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 two uh, Sundays, this one preaches two Sundays. Okay, you preach, you, is that not Sunday? I thought you preached last week, uh, so it's my turn today. No, there's nothing like that. Ube preaches, ah, so others will be sitting down. You can be itching everywhere, but you will sit down. And you are supposed to receive the word, encourage the preacher, and let the work be complete. Sometimes you can preach better than somebody. Doesn't mean it doesn't mean they should make you preach. It's an honor that is bestowed on you. When it's given to somebody, sit down and support well, and take spend your time picking notes, learning how the preaching goes, and learning how to be better. That one day if they put you there, you won't shack. What you want to hang me? Now you are thinking to yourself that if only they gave me that chance, how I'll preach for them to see that I am called. Share. Sure. Preaching is not by sitting down feeling you can preach. Oh, they can make you preach. You'll be shocked when you come to. Hey, 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 hey. As the minutes are going down, the applause is also going down. <laughs> by thirty minutes, Uben will say. Revelations finish. You won't take your time to study well. For two years, I've not flowed in the church. And we didn't know that. We were thought we were united. Bishop even pointed the church to me and said, oh, Have you seen that church? They are very united. They are very powerful. When the senior pastor preaches, the associate preaches a similar thing with a different topic and supports that point. He is telling us that two years he has not flowed in the church. And that when the senior pastor travels, you know, he said things are different. When he travels, there's joy. He waves his hand like, there's joy. <laughs> People are blessed. And the church grows. He, he spoke of grows. He made his mouth. He turned his mouth like Sophie. Now, church grows. Then he said, when he returns, and he mounts the pulpit, people are annoyed. That's what he said. I heard it with my ears, not somebody told me. I heard it with my I, I couldn't believe it. When his senior pastor comes to mount the pulpit, people are, today he doesn't have a church. I was told one day he, his wife had made a, a, they were struggling financially and she made a, a nursery or a school somewhere. And he was going, they don't even know why he was going to the school. He was going to the school to go and see the work that was being done. And they don't know what happened. He alone was driving. He alone went to the school. Before they realized, he has crashed the car into the school and brought the whole school down. What do you want to senior pastor? And when he mounts the puppy, people are annoyed. May God deliver us Amen. from this junction of elimination. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Please clap your hands for my two wonderful. Father, bless them. Make them sharper than they are in Jesus' name.
Ixi. Do you have time for just one or two more? Genesis 37. Let's finish this one. Genesis 37. From verse 1. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. Two. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock of his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Bela and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him. So the next one, that's number what? Number six, when someone reports your evil deeds to the authorities, he says, he used to bring their evil deeds to the father. He brought unto his father their evil reports. If you are in a church, try and be a darling boy of your father, of the pastor, the man of God. Be a darling boy. By reporting evil report and evil deeds in the church. It's not lapor. It's spiritual. If somebody says something bad about Reverend Francis Prophet Aubin, you must tell it to the father. Joseph was like that. That's why the father made him a coat of many colors. He became a darling boy. In Ghana, no, they say Ghanaian hospitality, but I want to even say sometimes it's Ghanaian hypocrisy. They are smiling with you, but they are saying bad things behind you. In a beautiful church like this, dear Jack, we don't need you to come and say bad things or something that, look, the church is tight, it's, it's, it's very hemmed in, the car park is no car park, but we like the church. It's very nice. Even the fact that you are part, when you are driving by and the car park is full, and the, the other day I was coming, I saw, I saw the car park was full, cars were everywhere. I, I drove and walked in and prophesied over the people and I ran away. It was nice. But when you are passing by and the car park is full, it, it, it has a feeling that a lot of people are receiving the word of God. Yes. Because in, in town, there are cars parked at various corners. Roads are choked with cars and it's beer bar. It's a pub. They are drinking beer. They are blowing children. Yes. They are smoking weed. They are quaffing. Hard liquor. What sort of church is this? Why shouldn't they get a, a big car park so that when we come, we can park our cars there? This is the wrong not to come to church here again. Because the other day, when I parked on the other side, somebody scratched my car. Yeah. And they keep long. And they said sometimes when they say they will close at eight before you realize it has kept long. <laughs> Preaching, no? you are a hypocrite. When the church extends a little bit, keep quiet and praise God and focus on what is happening because maybe God is now about in the extra time. No? That's when you will see your victory. When you are watching soccer and they go extra time, don't you stay? That's why I say you are a hypocrite. Yesterday night, I was, I closed service. I went home. It was past midnight, 1 a.m. or something. I saw that Nadal and somebody were coming to play. Tim, they were coming to play tennis. 
I told myself that these people eh, me, I won't watch you because I have to sleep. <laughs> but if I follow you, eh, I am sure that you will stretch me. I left and went to sleep. In the morning, I checked. So I thought Madame Apu had been beaten because he was beating Potter, Potter, Potter the first set. Not knowing that he had come back and beaten the guy. When I checked, they had been there for four hours, 49 minutes. And he can go deep much here. Oh. But some of you watched live till the morning. Oteha near preach one hour. Not the church. And when you hear people talking like that, report them. That man who has been sitting at the door, no, he is criticizing that we keep long when we are preaching. And I told him that he's wrong. You can't comment on the preaching that is long. These are matters that are too high for you. David said, My heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Neither do I exercise myself in matters that are too high. Some matters are too high for you. A normal church member, you have no right to comment about the length of the time. It is time shortening of services in a doom, Christopher Foja. We are my point 12. What? I feel now, oh, oh, can't touch them. When now you say, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. No, don't make comment. You see, if you did that when you were in the Orthodox Church, Presby Church, Methodist Church, you see, those ones, they are institutions that it doesn't matter what happens. They are not even tied to any man of God. Do you know any man of God, pastor's name in Presby Church? Oh. They don't have to, it's an institution. We, our churches, we depend on the man of God and the leader because that's the anointed person. They are more into the institution and not the person who is anointed. They don't even want somebody to be set forth as oh, nipa ye nipa. It's not God. He will become like God. You are idolizing the man. See, that's that's that system. Leave it. Don't leave it. Don't bring that thing here. Here, dear. You were one man of God, or you're a prophet, or you're a teacher, or you're an evangelist, or you're an apostle, or whatever. And, and throwing stones and criticisms at him, do you see, is hacking at the very root of the church. Do not allow anybody to sit here and make comments about what we are doing? And I saw an unpiscado. Because a man who cried last who preaches you, it's kind of booba, sir. Now they have more bomb with your friends, sir. No, don't speak like that. Preaching, no? And these men of God, young young boys, some about, some per titles, some per titles. Me tell you, cry now from prophet. Yes, yes, sir, I'm friend. And I was watching Doctor Swaboso. Hey. Now, doctorate been acquired. Honorary doctorate. No matter how much you say, no. Eh, doctorate. You see, you are you are exercising yourself in matters that are too high for you. And when you go abroad, or everybody calls their boss, they call them Dave. They call them this Obagana. Now, sorry, now so for no, you are calling his name now. Go and uh, Francis was say, Hey, don't call him Francis. Call him Reverend. Say, I'm up a title, so don't. Chief Executive Queen Freno, Marilyn. Marilyn. You know, Marilyn is looking for you. Marilyn said you should come. Dave said, Hey, Chief Executive, my friend Dave, it won't matter in their office. But here in the spiritual church, it matters. Papa. Jesus, as anointed as he was, when they lowered their esteem for him, he couldn't do miracles there. Mark chapter 6, if you read from verse 2, the Bible says he went to his own hometown. They neutralized him by referring to his background, his parentage, his brothers, his sisters, his profession. They lowered him. The Bible says there he could do no miracles, except no mighty works, except to heal a few sick folk and just one or two be and then just go away. 
then he went to the next town the next time he distributed the power to the disciples they were casting devils they were healing the sick they were doing wonders be a darling boy a darling girl one of the pastors who sits in front was saying at the car park that he did this church you know he's here for a short time or 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 j a yika or a certain or a certain they were starting prayer meetings to be on the fear you should report it. <laughs> a pastor here cannot have a prayer meeting secret one. Obia nim sofonin teda. Hey, Jack. Then some of these singers go and sing solo at the fellowship. No, it's not allowed. I'm not saying anybody does it, but if it happens, it's out of order. We want you to do prayer meeting, but we can't do prayer meeting. Hey, but eh, so now in this church we can't be free. Eh? No, you can't be free. You can't be. It's too late. <laughs> you cannot be free. Truth be told, you cannot be free. I'm not free to do what I like. I am directly under Bishop Dagwood Mills. I am not free. I shouldn't want to be free to do what I like. Have you ever seen your hand moving? You see, that thing that you see in Adam's family in cartoons, it's just a cartoon thing. It's not real. Where you see the hand is moving and talking and relating with people and so on. A hand cannot be free moving in town. A hand is connected and connected and connected to the head. So when Joseph had his went to the farm, he will see the brothers, they are selling some of the sheep. They pocket the money. They do say, hey, daddy, I went to the farm. Reuben Naphtali, God, and Asher, they, were, they, they pocketed some of the money. They, 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 they sold their sheep today. Yes. When now you say, almost the money you mass them. Yes. He went to report to the father. You see, and here now, you see that people don't want to say the things. I mean, I should go and say, they will be angry with me. You won't be a darling boy. When will you get a coat of many colors? You should tell. If you are in the choir, some people are criticizing the leader, you must say it. You will be a darling girl. Reward Joseph-like people. How else will sometimes, God should reveal to the leader, sometimes he will, but sometimes the only way is for somebody to tell brethren they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. So this time, when you feel that someone is favored and preferred above you, you can get to a junction of elimination. Yes. You can get to a junction of elimination. And then, finally, I go to 2 Samuel 15. I can't even start from 13, but just okay. 13, there's where you see Absalom. Absalom. His sister Tamar, and it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. So David's son Amnon loved his half-sister Tamar, who was one mother, one father with a guy called Absalom. So in chapter 13, this Amnon feigned sickness. In fact, he had a cousin called Jonadab. And Jonadab gave him a plan that since he very bad guy, so watch out for people you relate with who give bad advice. He told Amnon that, look, be, make like you are sick and send a message to your father that only this girl should bring me food. And when she comes, sack everybody and you are stronger than her. You can have your way. But you shouldn't be looking so morose when you, have, you love a girl and you are not getting her. So he had the plot and it happened. 
So the Bible says, her brother um, Absalom heard of this, verse 20. And Absalom, her brother, said unto her, Hath Amnon thy brother been with you? She said, Yes. But so he said to her that remain in my house. So she, he put her in his house for a long time. David heard it, they didn't really do anything about it. Then Absalom, her brother, made a party after two years. Then he told the people, his servants, that when the heart of Amnon is merry, kill him. I've commanded you. So now, this, is, this portion is when you have sympathetic heads. The head was not done directly to Absalom, but to his sister Tamar. But he was hurt with the head of his sister. So sometimes you are not the one that something was done to. Somebody else may be disciplined. Somebody else may be worked on. And you are standing by and it's paining you how you feel that he was treated. It's not how you feel that he was not treated fairly. And you take the head on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's too fantastic. You will be in a system like this now. You see that people have been this, somebody has been sacked. Oh, why? What did he do? Oh, but that guy's a very good, whatever. Because sometimes you don't know the background stories. Yes. Because we don't like to reveal the sometimes the misbehaviors of our own so many times love covers a lot of sins and people's misbehaviors are shielded from the public eye but when it fills the cup and they fill the cup of sin and now judgment has to be meted out you may not know the background you may only see that oh this nice gifted person they have sacked him why this check there somewhere who Hey, now dear, what is happening? <laughs> Nothing is happening. Something powerful is happening. I'm prophesying. Wow. Hey! So people get hurt by other people's hurts. Not even their own. We are now and so for Obi, a yow, wow, and what run? Even the person herself is very okay that I've been sad because I know they should have sacked me last two years. I'm surprised that they are not sacking me. So the person has accepted the sacking. You know? Now what? What the You know what? This is all time will allow me. So until next time, when we come your way with this same program, this has been your regular host. <laughs> let me pray for you if you are here and some hurt is in your heart I want to pray that God will deliver you from it because you are supposed to cross Gilgal Junction cross Bethel Junction cross Jericho Junction go over Jordan and it is at that place that a certain glory and anointing will be afforded you. Lift your hand. Father, for everyone here, deliver us. At the junctions of elimination, may we be, may we escape. May we escape it in the name of Jesus. And I pray for everyone, Lord. Save us from the wicked one. From the tempter who comes when we have left Gilgal. To eliminate us from Bethel. And to eliminate us in Jericho. And to stop our progress in Jordan. And even beyond the Jordan. Save us Lord. That the mantles that you have distributed. The mantles and the unction that is in a house like this one. May come upon the sons and daughters of this house. May we never be eliminated by the enemy. But may we stay on. Until our faith is made sight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you.